Come on, my brothers and sisters, and let us acknowledge that this is the day that the Lord has made. And we shall do what? Rejoice. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. For I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, I do not ignore the fact that some of us may have had a trying week, a busy week, and probably have come to church burden. But I want you to know that the Lord is still God, the Lord is still blessing, and the Lord is still lifting burdens. And you all, I've gotten in the routine of keep saying it every Sunday, but that's how I am every week. And that thing is that when I think about the goodness of the Lord and all he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I get happy all by myself when I think about where I could have been and what I see I am now. I can't help but to tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you for being so good. And then when I come in this place and I can see my beloved Greater Cooper Chapel, I get happy just seeing oh, yeah. that you all are here. Oh, yeah. Amen. Because yeah. we all could have been dead and gone. Yeah. But because of the unmerited favor of God, we are alive and doing well. Thank Amen. I say not only to those of you that are here, but also to my brothers and sisters that may have joined us through live streaming. To those of you that have joined us by way of Facebook, take time now and like and share this worship opportunity. If you've joined us by way of YouTube, there you can subscribe to the Cooper Chapel channel, and every time we go live, you can join us. But there you can also like and share our worship opportunity. For it is not about us, but it's all about the love of God. Is that right? Amen. Are we ready for worship? Are you ready to give God your best? Amen. Come on and let us receive our praise team as they bless us in song.
your mercy endure forever. That's right. How many of y'all actually believe that? Amen. Amen. You are good. That's All right. the time. All the time. You're good. Yes, he is. And bow here for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to come this morning and tell you thank you. Thank you because you um, allowed me the opportunity to see another day. Father, you gave me the opportunity to witness my family one more time, and I want to tell you thank you. They woke up this morning and everybody was doing well. My wife was fine. My son was fine. I want to tell you thank you. I didn't get a call in the middle of the night saying something bad had happened with a family member. I just want to tell you thank, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Because it could have been thank the other you. way around. Yes. And just because of that, I want to tell you thank you. Thank you, Father, for just allowing me to be here one more time to see fellowship with my church members and seeing them doing as well as they are. I just want to tell you thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There's so much going on just want, around here, so much evil. I would like to ask that you just come around and just touch. Fear the world with love, Father. Touch the family of the police officer. Yes, Lord. Lost his life yes, just doing Lord. his job, yes, Father. Lord. Just touch. Touch, Father. Give them understanding. Yes, Lord. Also, Father, touch the family of the, the ones that lost them, the one during the uh, crime. But just touch their family, Father, yes, also. Lord. He was their child, and I know they love him. The world may look at him different, but they love him and want to tell you thank you and have mercy on his soul, Father. Yes. Just have mercy, Father. You're so good and, and just worthy of everything, Father. Just fill your world with love. Just fill your world with love. We need it. Your grace is needed ever more, Father, than it has ever been. Yes. There's just so much going on, so much under, misunderstanding and confusion. And we just need you to come down, Father, and just have your way. Yes, Lord. Just have your way, Father, in this yes, building, Lord. Father, like yeah. only you can, Father. Just have your way. Touch. There's someone here that need a touch from you. Just need to hear a word from you, Father. Just stop by, Father, if you don't stay long. Just stop by, Father, and have mercy. Stop by, Father, today because we need you, and we just can't make it without you. Have mercy, Father. That's that you bless the pastor, Father. Bless him from the top of the heel to the sole of his feet, Father. Touch him, Father, and give him so that he can give us a word that we need to make it through this week, Father, because we need your food, Father, to make it through this week, day, this life daily. This journey is it's tough, Father, but with you, it can be much easier. Father, just have mercy. Forgive us as our sins, Father. Just have mercy, Father, on this day. Have mercy. Yes, Lord. Have mercy, Father. This prayer I pray in your son Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I heard in his prayer, touch Lord. Touch. Everybody ought to lift your hands and say, touch Lord. Touch Lord. Hallelujah. Right. Touch Lord. The Lord will. He, Because somebody already know he has already touched them. Yes, Lord. And the Lord is keeping on touching us over and over. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Whatever you're going through or whatever is going to come before you, if the Lord can touch you, Yes. Everything will be all right. Yes, will. Amen. Our scripture for this morning comes to us from Psalm 4. Psalm 4. From the King James Version, you shall find these words. Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me. And hear my prayer. O ye sons of men, how long will ye turn my glory into shame? How long will ye love vanity and seek after leasing Salah? But know that the Lord has set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. Stand in awe and seeing not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed, and be still, Salah. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness, and put your trust in the Lord. There be many that say, who will show us any good? 
Lord, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. Thou hast put gladness in my heart more than in the time that their corn and their wine increased. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep. For thou, Lord, only make it me dwell in safety. That, that's, that's that prayer. So much going on. But I can lay down in peace. And the Lord can keep me in safety. Is that right? Amen. Come on and give the Lord a hand of praise. Let her receive our praise team as we go higher in worship. Amen.
the Lord. I dare you to call on his name. I dare you to raise your praise in this place. Because God can do anything but fail. God can do whatever you need him to do. If it's pain in your body, just believe. God wants to sing you glory, your glory, your glory, your glory. Your power, your glory, glory, Jesus. I don't know about you, but sometimes family can't help you. Sometimes your spouse can't help you. But when you get to that point in your life, all you gotta do is look to the hills. Money can't get you out of this situation. Your job can't get you out of this situation. Your degree can't get you out of your situation. But I dare you to say, Jesus, he'll come and sit in your situation. So Jesus, we need you. Jesus, we need you. Jesus, we need you. Can't make it without you. Come in this room, Lord. Go your way on this place. Heal bodies. Heal broken hearts. Come on. Come on, call on us. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we love you. Oh. There is a name, hey, I love to hear, I love to sing of his word, it sounds like music, oh, to, to my ears, God, the sweetest the sweetest name I heard. And that name I'm going to keep on preaching. Can somebody help me say, oh, how I love Jesus. Say, oh, how I love you, Jesus. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Talk to him. Say, we love times we watch worship and we see others worshiping God sometimes you gotta press your way in the worship it's like some mornings you don't want to get up and you don't want to get out the bed 
but something about when you get on your knees or when you lay on your back I say Lord I need you it'll give you a strength that you never felt in your life and as we worship I tell you to open up your mouth and lift your hands and seek the Lord don't seek me but cry unto the Lord because he hears your cries he hears your fears he hears your pain oh we thank you Jesus he's healing he's healing he's touching but you gotta reach out to him he's changing minds he's changing hearts oh we to be worshiping you're not watching a movie you ought to be worshiping if nobody else will admit I need his glory hallelujah I need his touch hallelujah come on and worship Come on and worship yes, him here. Yes, He's good. Yes, he is. I'm still from the old school that yes. say, when the praises go up, yes. blessings yes. after blessings yes. will come down. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, yes, Amen. Amen. Oftentimes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. I don't speak on everything that God yes, Lord, yes, Lord. gives me. I know that we yes, Lord. are CMEs and we are Methodists. But I'm, I'm getting ready to change our format of worship yes, Lord. starting next Sunday yes, Lord. and from now until the annual conference because we don't know what's going to happen in the conference yes, Lord. I'm appointing Reverend DeAndre Stevens as our worship leader amen and therefore the praise team and the mill chorus has to follow my lead in the way we worship from now on. All right. All right. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Because you know after nine years, I'm out of the box. And it's all about us really letting go yes, Lord. and letting God. Yes. I'm talking about self now. All right. I've been through too much. In order for me to sit back and just act like I got it all together, I owe God. I owe God a praise. And the fact of the matter is, I'm not the only one in this place that owe God our best in praise. Now you ought to see why every Sunday I say, when I think about the goodness of the Lord, and all that he's done for me, my soul has to cry out hallelujah. Yes, now, I don't wait on Sunday morning to cry hallelujah. Up and down the dangerous highway, I have to look at it and say hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. When I think about what the doctor said once before and what he's saying now, I can't help but to tell God, thank you. And I'm looking at some folks sitting in here you got one report from the doctor, but now the doctor is saying another thing. You can't help but to tell the Lord, thank you. And many of you are just sitting there looking like you don't know the Lord. But one thing I do know, that God is able to do anything but fail.
he keeps on reminding me why I owe him. And if I have to praise him by myself, I don't mind. He didn't wait on you to bless me, so why I got to wait on you to praise him? Over and over again, he's doing great things. Mm. I'm looking at folk been healed. I'm looking at folk that been delivered. I'm looking at when the bank said no, but you were still able to get that car. You were still able to get that house. And you mean to tell me that we can't give God praise? I told you when I came here, I was on a lot of different medications. I was even a diabetic. But the doctor said, you don't have diabetes anymore. And you mean to tell me that I'm going to act cool in here? I know that he's a healer. He is a healer. Mighty God, we serve. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, it's preaching time. It's time to hear word from the Lord. 
But there's no harm in what others say, taking a praise break. Yes, sir. Amen. Oh, yes. Amen. I say to you on last Sunday, I said to you that I know that we have left Calvary and Jesus has been resurrected from the grave. But I want to take you back to Calvary and do a series of sermons. Most of all, most of us know it as the seven last words. But I want to talk about the, the name of the series is the Calvary's Peace. Last Sunday I talked about the plan to forgive. Amen. I want to talk to you today, and I'm going to read the scripture, but our subject for today is the promise, the promise of paradise. Amen. The promise of paradise. Our scripture for that comes to us, amen, from Luke Gospel, the 23rd chapter. And I'm only going to read to you one verse, and that's the 43rd verse. Luke 23 and 43. And it says to us, And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Remember the promise. Promises. Promises. A promise is an unbreakable commitment. Yet we break our promises all the time. We promise to show up on time. We promise to love, honor, and obey. We promise to be just in all of our dealings. We promise to even be faithful in all our engagements and exemplary in our departments. Hmm? And then we break our promises. And our, when we break our promises, they are occupied or accompanied by excuses. My car broke down. I fell out of love with them. I didn't know I had to do all that for my church. We always come up with, with excuses. Not just some, but all of us have excuses sometimes. One older person said to me that sometimes excuses are nothing but a lie with a tuxedo on it. In other words, we lie and we try to dress up our lives. Hmm? But you know what? I wonder. How would we feel if God decided not to keep his word? Hmm? If he decided to skip a few promises due to his overcrowded agenda? Hmm? What if he canceled his promise to save a place for us in paradise? You remember Jesus said in Luke, um, in John chapter 14, I go away to prepare a place for you that where I am, you will be also. That was a promise he made. But what if he canceled that promise that we would not be able to leave this world and be with him in our father's house? Well, the thief on the cross knew nothing of the promises that Christ made in his three-year ministry. 
He only knew what he had heard thus far from the mouth of this suffering servant that he knew as Jesus. While he hung on the cross beside him. Are y'all with me? Yeah. If we have the order of the seven last words right, the thief had only heard, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That was all it took for this thief to confess his just punishment and entrust his failing life into this stranger's hand. I don't know about you, as I said last Sunday, all I needed to hear was the Lord said, forgive them. Huh? Because first of all, Paul says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Is that right? So to hear that Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Even though he said that over 2,000 years ago, he had us in mind as well. Hmm? And I'm foolish enough to believe that even if we know what we did, he's still going to forgive us. Uh, are y'all with me here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and remember, the stranger looked at him and said, remember me, Lord. When you come into your kingdom, hmm? he, that's what he said to the Lord. Now, I always tell you, especially those you meet me on Tuesday nights, don't sit here because the preacher said it. That's what it is. In your time of meditation, go back and read it. And you will see where the, he cried out to Jesus. But at that moment, Jesus uttered the promise that we cherish today. Today, thou shalt be with me in paradise. We spent our entire Christian life banking on that promise. Hmm? That Jesus Christ, our Savior, will remember us when this earthly house of our tabernacle shall be dissolved. And we come to the end of our Christian journey. Jesus promised, as I said to you earlier, that in my Father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. That's John 14. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. I don't know about you, my brothers and sisters, but I want to be where Jesus is. Hmm. I want to be because one writer said that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And I want to be free from all the troubles that we have to deal with down here. But my brothers and sisters, we trust those words. We trust our Savior that he will one day receive us into his paradise. But while Christ was hanging on Calvary's cross, he gave away many things. He gave his life to redeem us. He gave his cloak to some soldiers. He gave his mother to John. He gave his spirit to his father. And he gave paradise to a sinner. Not that kind of paradise that promises to temporarily relieve stress. Oh, I would love one day to go and just recline on the beach. Or go hang out in the Bahamas. Or oh, I would love to go to Paris and, and enjoy a different world. And some may consider those places paradise. Are y'all with me here? 
But the earth paradise can't compare to the paradise that the Lord is giving us. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You talking about a place that can relieve stress or give your emotional state a positive boost. It's the paradise that the Lord gives us that connects us with the Father. Eternal in the heavens where the angels were crying, holy, holy. It's a place of complete harmony. See, Jesus said, I want you all to stay with me. When he said today, thou shalt be with me in paradise. Many of you know I'm back in school and I'm in a Hebrew study class. And the Hebrew word for paradise is game, which from which we get the word garden. Hmm. It refers to the garden of Eden, the paradise that God created here on earth for men, but before man destroyed his own perfection by being disobedient to God by eating from that forbidden tree. But there is a precious stone called a star sapphire that is mined in Sri Lanka. The miners say it was formed in the earth by Adam's tears. The tears he shed when he was evicted from that precious garden. Tears for his lost Paradise. Paradise is not fictional. Some permanently happy places, isolated from the outside world. The word paradise describes the perfect state of the world prior to man's fall from grace. It is a place of abode for all who are virtuous. And though it has ceased on earth, it is preserved in heaven. And there's only one way in to God's paradise. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father except by me. The, the thief entered paradise by the way of Jesus. You and I must enter paradise the same way. When our days on the earth is done, we'll exchange our earthly discord for the harmony of heaven. We'll shed the stress of our days for the delight of the divine. We'll cast off earth's rubble in exchange for heaven's riches. We'll trade earth's miseries for the joy of heaven's mansions. Paradise has always been God's plan for man's future. Paradise is a place where love never fails and glory will never fade. I said paradise. Y'all ought to come on and go with me. Is a place where joy will never end and peace will never part. It is a place where shackles will never bind and storms will never threaten. It is a place where pain will never penetrate and souls will never sorrow. Paradise is a place where eyes will never go dim and friends will never part. It's a place 
where doubt will never rise and blessings will never cease. In paradise, worship will be more than wonderful. It will be breathtaking. You thought you had a good worship today, but oh, when we get over there in paradise, the choir will be singing, your bell will be ringing when we get over there in paradise. Mercy will be more than magnified. It will be magnificent in paradise. Grace will be more than glorified. It will be defied in paradise. Joy will be more jubilant. It will be uh, abhorrent uh, in paradise. Peace will be more than plentiful. It will be prolific uh, because paradise is a place where graves will never open and gates uh, will never close. Tears will never fall and hearts will never break. But I don't know about you. When I get over there, I don't have to tell the Lord of what I've been through. He already knows. He already knows the promise. He promised me a room over there. And when I get inside the gaze i'm gonna shout and tell the lord thank you thank you jesus thank you for bringing me to see an unseen danger come on and give the lord a hand of praise The promise, the promise of paradise. I don't know about you, my brothers and sisters, but the old songwriter said, heaven is my goal. Each and every day, every day I'm striving that when I leave this world, I can spend eternity with the Lord. I say to you, my brothers and sisters, the, sheer, the tears you shed down here, the troubles you go through, is rough. Sometimes it makes you want to throw your hands up and quit. But I want you to know that it's not over until God says it's over. On this journey we call life, we are tried every day. The enemy can use people that are close to you to try you, or even situations in your life will try your faith but you got to keep pressing and look into the heels from which cometh your help because all of our help comes from the Lord. Hallelujah. I say to you, my brothers and sisters, I just said in the message, and the only way you can experience paradise, only way you can experience great peace, is you gotta come through Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. And one thing I wanna say to you that's not contradictory to the message, you don't have to wait to get on the other side to experience great joy and great peace. Yeah, yeah. 
you can have peace right here on earth. I don't care what's going on in the streets or what's going on around us. You can still have peace. Yes. But you got to come to Jesus. Oh, yes. There's no other way but to come through Jesus. That's why I stand here and I plead with you, my brothers and sisters. First, let me talk to the individual that has not given the Lord their lives. I'm talking to you. I'm, I'm, I'm pleading with you to give Jesus a chance. Give him a chance to make things new in your life to make things better in your life. I wouldn't stand here. I know a lot of my colleagues will stand before the people and give them false hope. Give them a, fab a fable or a fairy tale. But I promise you, I promise you, if you give Jesus a chance in your life, I'm not going to say every day is going to be easy. I'm not going to say that you won't have troubles and trials at times. But the difference of having trouble with Jesus, trouble won't last always. Hmm? Somebody said weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. Brother Romley, when I was younger and I heard them say that, I thought when we woke up in the morning, that's what they meant. Huh? Yeah. But your morning can come late in the midnight hour. Yeah. Your morning can come at noonday. As long as Jesus stand up in your situation, that's your morning. Because morning means a new day. And the Lord can bring a new day for anybody anywhere at any time somebody here say pastor i need a new morning huh somebody is looking at me saying pastor it's me i need a morning i need a new morning experience if you have not given your life to the lord if you have not been saved i want to invite you i want you to come I want you to come and give the Lord your life today while the blood is running warm in your veins. Don't wait till next Sunday. Don't wait till tomorrow because the near, next moment is not promised. If you've already been saved, but if somebody in this place that's looking for a church home, you're looking for a place where there's love, where the Spirit of God reigns, and you're getting the Word of God. And the Lord is leading you to come to this place called Greater Cooper Chapel. While you have the chance, I want you to come. Give us your hand, but give God your heart. There's plenty of good room in the Father's house. And there's plenty of good room here at Greater Cooper Chapel for those that love the Lord. And I want to invite you to come. But then there's also some that say, I'm already saved. I already have a church home. But I need special prayer. Whether it's for you and your situation, or it's someone you love that you really want to bring to the altar. You want to bring to God in prayer. While the blood is running warm in your veins, why don't you come? Why don't you come? And know in your heart that God is able to do anything but fail. He's able to turn your midnight into a morning. He's able. Do you all really believe God is able? Yes. It's not what somebody told you, yes. but you've experienced it for yourself. 
that he's able to do anything but fail. We got to learn to step out on faith and trust God at his word. Huh? You just don't know what God has been showing me all this week. You just don't know me and the Lord been talking big time. We talk all the time. But the stuff that he's been telling me this week, I can't help myself. I got to say, for real, God? Are you going to do it for me? I know I don't deserve it, but little old me, you going to make a way for me? And I can't help. This is why I tell you what I think, when I think, when I think, and over and over, I keep on thinking. I can't help but to tell the Lord, thank you. Because I know I don't deserve it. But I'm thankful that while he's passing out blessings, he don't skip over me. While he's making a way for others, he keeps on making a way for me. That's why I got to tell the Lord, thank you over and over. That's why I got to tell him, thank you over and over. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Even when I can't see what he's doing, I'm trusting him to make a way for me. Wherever you are, I'm going to do something differently. Around this time, I normally say, come to the altar and let's pray. What is a prayer? It's a conversation between you and God. And notice I said a conversation. That means you talk to him and he talks to you. I got time. You ought to have time. How many of y'all believe you can get a prayer through? I dare you to find somebody. And I don't want you to find somebody in your house. I want you to find somebody. Join hands with them and go into prayer right now. Stop waiting for your pastor to always be the one praying. I want you to join somebody right now and just go in prayer with them. You pray for them and they pray for you. Hallelujah. Come on. Go on and pray. Hallelujah. In the name. In the name. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel your presence, oh God. I feel your presence, oh God. I feel your presence, oh God. Touch in the name, in the name, in the name of Jesus. Glory. Do it for us, God. Do it for us, God. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Have your way in this place. From the cross stand all the way to the front door. Touch, touch God. If they need any healing, if they need any deliverance, if they need mind regulation, if they need heart fixing, somebody need a financial blessing. But in the name of Jesus, hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Come on and give him praise. Come on and give him praise. Come on and give him praise. Oh. How many of you believe he's answering prayer? How many of you believe he's heard your prayer? Yeah. And watch him, watch him, watch him. Watch him, watch him. I don't usually walk the aisle, but he's coming. He's coming. Your prayers is being answered. In the name. In the name. In the name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Touch, touch, Lord. Touch, touch, Lord. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. In this place. Lord, change us. Change us. Change our mind. Change our heart. Glory to God. Glory to God. The Lord is doing a new thing. The Lord is getting ready. You hadn't seen anything yet. You hadn't seen it yet. Come on and give the Lord a hand the praise. we continue to worship God through giving, through giving, somebody's going to say, are you going to bless the offering? We do that in traditions. We either pray before the offering and we either pray before, but I'm saying that all the praying that you all had already done before you give is already blessed. I'm, because we do understand that we're going to have a brief church conference after this service. But, but my vision, I'm, I'm believing that God is going to send, I don't know how, it's not my business to know how God going to do his business. But it is my business that God's going to send a financial overflow for Greater Cooper Chapel. I'm believing that. I'm claiming that in Jesus' name. 
And guess what? Not only is he going to give an overflow for the church, some of you are going to be able to testify that the Lord has gotten in your bank account some kind of way, and he's turned those things around. He didn't put zeros before it, but he's going to put zeros behind it. And you're going to be able to shout about your financial blessing. I'm believing that. Today is April the 14th. Those of you that take notes, write it down. That pastor said that God is going to bring an overflow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I ask you all over the sanctuary, if you will, I want you to come and worship. I want you to worship with your gifts. I want you to stand and be directed by the ushers, cheerfully bringing your gifts. Amen. Come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. I heard the musician say, I pray for you. You pray for me. Watch God change things. I don't know about you, but I'm preparing for the change. I'm preparing for the change. I don't know about you, but I needed this today. I needed this worship on today. I came physically dream, but it's like the Lord has renewed my strength on today. Amen. And then to know that he promised room for me in paradise. Amen. Amen. I'm thankful to God for the entire music ministry for blessing us on today. Thank you for our officers for serving. Thank you to our media ministry, our ushers. Amen. I just thank God for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. We know that second Sundays are normally our church conference Sundays, and we're going to have it today. But y'all, I need you all. If you're a member of this church, I need you. If you can't stay the whole meeting, because I don't believe in holding it alone, but I need you to stay. Amen. Because in the midst of that, I need to cast a vision. It's vision casting time again. 
And I want to share with you the vision that God has given me. And I'm believing that God is going to bring it to pass. Amen? Amen. Let me go ahead. I understand uh, we've already asked for those people with birthdays and, and um, anniversaries in the month of April. But we're still praying God blesses upon you. Um, anyone that is considered to be a guest, are there any guests? Amen. We're thanking God for all of you. Even those that don't consider themselves guests, I'm praying that one day they will officially become members. Uh, but uh, amen. But I'm praying to God that they have that conversation with him. You don't want nobody to try to push you to go somewhere that your heart is not ready for. But I do want to pray with them and for them. Amen. amen. Let us pray. God of our Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. At the close of this worship experience, asking you, O oh God, to bless like only you can. Thank you for the visitation of your Holy Spirit. And I ask you, O oh God, to, as we prepare to depart from worship, many will remain for a church conference. Be with us in that conference. And then after the conference, when we go to our various destinations, be with us there. Lord, we love you. We thank you and we adore you. And we ask you to continue to bless like only you can. It's in the name of Jesus that we do pray. Amen.